one of the most conspicuous things that I find to be absent from the new catechism is the duties of husband and wife. And it's one of the most, yes. one of the most conspicuous thing. Cause it's something that relates to most of us. Um, right. And I love how Prumer lays it out. It's very, very simple, very concise. Uh, it just says, so this is reading from my copy. This is that old version mm-hmm. number 463. And it just says that there are, some obligations between husband and wife that are mutual, they're totally equal, you know, egalitarian in that sense, which is mutual love, rendering the marital debt, life in common. And then the husband is obliged to be head of the family, provide for wife and children. Right, wife right. is obliged to show due obedience to her husband, pay careful attention to the home and the education of children. I think the, the language of rights and duties seems to have been greatly abandoned because perhaps a, a misunderstanding, a misreading of Alphonsus out of contents too rigorous you know we don't like duties and rights or something but tell us about some of the the ways that laity can use Prumer because to me reading Prumer has really helped me just get some of the basics yeah well that's exactly it in point in fact what Prumer is outlining there is uh, what the church has always said (laughs) but I mean historically what happened was is that communism when they said Russia will spread its errors it wasn't just in relationship to communism and governments it was even in the church's own thinking I mean if you look at uh, Vladimir uh, Lenin's um, uh, interview with uh, Clara Zenkin it's very clear that he's basically destroying the entire roles of men and women in that process and he's denigrating the, the true honor, the nobility of the, of the wife's role within the family and raising the children. He's denigrating all of that. And so a lot of the feminist thinking has infiltrated even the church's thinking. And so I think they're afraid, or even if it hasn't infiltrated, they're afraid to make it very clear, well, these are what the distinctive roles are. And I think that's the beauty of Prumer is, is that um, just with clarity, he just lays it out. Okay, this is what you can and cannot do. This is what your obligations are. This is what they aren't. Um, and I think that uh, the, I think one of the biggest advantages of Prumer too is, is something which I've made advantage of, which you've kind of referenced at least obliquely, in, and that is this, that there are things that most modern Catholics do not understand about what is morally right and wrong or what the church has always taught in relationship to a particular thing, like, for example, the marital debt, which you just mentioned. They just, they've never been taught it. It's not, has not been preached for the last 50 years. And so there's basic information that <clears throat> even Catholics who might even consider themselves fairly well-educated may not even know, you know, that this is, no, 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 this is what the church has already said, or that this is what the saints had always said, et cetera, in relationship to something. So it provides, you know, if a, if a layman is actually able to read through that, they're going to have a pretty clear vision of two things, which I think is really good. One is... Um, the, the beauty of Prumer is he not only deals with what's morally right and wrong, and, that these, and so you'll get the, the basics, but he also lays it out in the context of the virtues. So you'll start getting a sense of what the virtues are in all of this process, too. You know, what virtues you're developing when, you, when, you, when you're, you know, uh, being just in this particular case, etc. So I think it's, uh, that, that's one of the other advantages is, you know, historically, Moral theologies were actually broken down into two different kinds of moral theology texts, those which talked about um, sin, what was morally right in relationship to the Ten Commandments, and then those which were morally right and wrong in relationship to the virtues. And in, the, in a truly Thomistic style, Prumer follows the one of, um, he doesn't, it's not that they're against, that, that this is against the commandments, but also every sin that we commit is against a particular virtue, etc. And so you learn a lot about that in the process too.